Hello, this is Little Green Ghouls, and welcome back to Goosebumps Revisited, a series where I break down a classic Goosebumps book and any episode that goes along with it. I will also be telling some of Goosebumps cliches and classic moments. This week, I'm excited to visit My Hairiest Adventure. This was one of the books I remembered well before revisiting it this week. I was really into dogs as a kid, so I think I probably read this one a few times. It's one of the more silly Goosebumps stories, and there are endless puberty jokes to be made with it, but overall, I think it's a fun read. If you haven't read this one, you should because it's a little notorious. To me, this is one of the uglier covers from the original 62. I like that it shows just how hairy Larry's hands are getting, but if you stop and look at this kid's ears, you realize the proportions are really off. I know Larry is mentioned to have large ears, but these things are freaking enormous. It looks like he's transforming into a chimpanzee, and I just don't like it. The 2006 slime border somehow manages to make an ugly cover even worse. Switching the colors from blue and red to purple and brown was a choice. It knocks off one of the and growings from the tagline. There's just not much else to say about it. It's ugly. There was also no later 2000s reprint to look at, nor is there any notable merchandise, which kind of surprised me because we've seen worse books than this get plenty of merchandise. Our front tag says, it keeps growing and growing and growing. This supposedly references the old Energizer Bunny commercials. What is thy bidding, my master? There is a great disturbance in the forest. Yet is better. It will renew the power of the dark side. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going. Our back take says, He's having a really, really bad hair day. And for poor Larry, he'll have nearly two weeks worth of bad hair days in this one. Before we get into the summary, let's read the blurb on the back. Larry Boy just found the coolest thing in the trash. It's an old bottle of Instatan. Rub on a dark suntan in minutes. That's what the label says. So Larry and his friends do. But nothing happens. Until Larry notices the hair. Dark spiky hair growing out in his hands and face. Really gross shiny hair. Hair that keeps growing back, even after he shaves it off. Okay, now on to the summary. The book opens with our introduction to Larry Boyd, who's in the process of being mauled by a pack of stray dogs. Well, not mauled, but chased down the street. His town apparently has an unusually high percentage of stray dogs, and they all want to eat Larry. This is one of our rare Winter Goosebumps books, so the slippery snow is making it even harder for him to escape the pack. The last time this happened, he was able to jump into a random parked car to hide, but this time he's not even trying that method, because the cars are covered in snow. I would've assumed just hoping for an unlocked car would be futile, but maybe that's because I can't think of a time I've ever left my car unlocked even when I lived in the middle of nowhere. The first chapter ends with Larry slipping in the snow and waiting for his inevitable demise via dog attack. Thankfully, his friend Lily appears and battles the dogs off with a snow shovel. Larry then proceeds to describe Lily, and it's notable that she has one blue eye and one green eye. I say this is notable because whenever something like this is mentioned in Goosebumps, it becomes a part of the plot later somehow. Larry and Lily enter the house where we meet the dreaded Goosebumps friend group. This one consists of Larry, Lily, Manny, Jared, and Christina. A pack of kids ensures that we will have an enormous amount of asinine banter between the kids to make up for the lack of plot. But hey, maybe I'm jumping the gun and these kids won't be insufferable. So far we have a ragtag team and I think the curveball here is that they're all in a garage band. Larry's hair is messy from the snow and he's like Max from Let's Get Invisible where his stylish hair is a key component to his personality so his friends also are shouting Harry Larry at him. Which I guess given what we know about the plot and the cover so far might be some foreshadowing. We then find out this band name, which is The Geeks, and I guess last week it was The Spirit, or Pirate Gold, because they change it often. Their nemesis band is Howie and the Shouters, and I have to say, none of these band names are doing it for me. Lily wanted the name Pirate Gold, because in addition to having heterochromia, she wears a gold coin around her neck at all times, because her grandpa gave it to her and told her it was genuine Pirate Gold. In case you were curious about the band roles, they are Christina, Manny, and I play guitar. Lily is the singer, and Jared plays keyboard. His keyboard has a drum synthesizer with 10 different rhythms on it, so we kind of have drums. As predicted earlier, we have a lot of banter happening, and through this we learn that there's a Battle of the Bands event happening in two weeks that the geeks need to prepare for. Does Battle of the Bands have its own TV Tropes article? Because it should. If a story has a band in it, it's almost guaranteed a Battle of the Bands event will happen at some point. I can't hate on it though because School of Rock is a great movie and it's Goosebumps adjacent because of Jack Black. I've just been informed that all of your children are missing. And if you want to be a teacher, Jack Black. <laughs> the School of Rock. It will test your head and your mind and your brain. We suffer through a couple pages of band practice before moving on to a snowball fight. Then we build a snowman before Larry decides to start digging through the neighbor's dumpster. This is something Larry does often, I guess. He just loves pawing through piles of old stuff. I do too, but it's called a thrift store or an antique store. 
not the neighbor's garbage. While digging through the dumpster, he finds an old bottle of Instatan, and we all know where this is going. These children are gonna rub themselves with lotion they pulled out of the fucking trash, as if that's in any way normal. They all proceed to lather up with dumpster lotion, because they think it'll just be hilarious when they roll into school with fake tans. We can all get great tans, come on, let's do it, it'll be so cool. Can you see the look on Miss Shindling's face? We'll tell her we all went to Florida. I think people would find it hilarious if they found out that these children coated themselves in dumpster juice, essentially. I also find it fascinating that out of five kids, Stein didn't even bother to have any of them hesitate. Every single one is on board with rubbing themselves with lotion that Larry found in the dumpster. No wonder they're such good friends. The standards are dismal. Lily puts a big glob in her hand, remarks that it smells nice, and goes straight for the face. Not even a test patch. Anyone familiar with skincare knows you should always do a test patch, because you never know what curveball your body's going to throw at you. Larry is last to lather up, but he looks at the bottle and gasps in a chapter cliffhanger. The Instatan has expired. In fact, it says, do not use past February 1991. This book is from 1994, so this stuff is three years past due. Larry then blushes, gives into peer pressure, and lathers on up too. By the way, blushing appears to be his actual defining character trait, because I don't think we've gone two pages without this kid blushing about something. The kids all literally cheer once Larry finishes covering himself in the lotion. They all stand in front of the mirror and wait for these Instatans to appear. Nothing is happening when suddenly Manny screams that his face is falling off and appears to be holding a pale glob of his own skin in a chapter cliffhanger. This ends up just being a wet wad of tissue. Easily mistaken for flesh, I'm sure. They all give up on the tan and proceed to finish their snowman. Larry is also a litter bug because he just tosses the lotion out in the snow. The kids then proceed to have another multi-page snowball fight because I guess the first one just wasn't enough. But in the middle of it, Larry doesn't feel right and collapses to the ground sick. We then cut to the doctor's office where Dr. Merkin, yes, as in the pee wig, is injecting Larry with a mysterious green liquid. Larry gets these shots every two weeks and doesn't seem to think anything of it. Larry is like me with a solid fear of needles and has to look away when Dr. Merkin gets ready to inject him. Whenever I get a shot or give blood, I also have to look away and talk incessantly so I don't pass out. We learn that Larry doesn't have any sweat glands, so he overheats easily, but if you already know the twist, this is a fun little clue and hidden science fact. We cut to later, and Larry's on the phone with Lily where they spend some pages talking shit about Howie and the Shouters and Battle of the Bands. I think Howie and the Howler sounds better, and it's really hard for me not to say that by mistake. We jump to the bathroom, and Larry's getting ready to brush his teeth when he is horrified to find a thick patch of black hair on the back of his hand, hair where there wasn't hair before, a familiar tear. Larry is now extra afraid of being called Harry Larry, because we've established that embarrassment is this child's biggest fear. He tries literally pulling the whole clump of hair off his hand, and is confused when this approach doesn't work. He then decides the best next thing is to find hair remover lotion, but alas there is none. Finally, after three pages, he realizes the most obvious solution is his dad's razor. We spend a bit detailing the steps to shaving, and Larry finally heads to bed, but he worries that the dumpster lotion is causing all this. A valid concern. As he drifts off to sleep, his whole body feels itchy, and he wonders if the thick black hair is currently sprouting all over. It's not, because the next morning during breakfast, as he dines on frosted flakes, he is hair free. He catches up with Lily on his way to school and decides to confide his hair situation to her. She tricks him by saying she too has hairy hands, but then adds that she turns into a wolf and ate three people last night. This does not amuse Larry, but it did me. Larry's worst fear comes to fruition, and Lily begins chanting Harry Larry at him, which again causes him to blush. She gets curious and wants to know if he was serious about the hairy hand thing, but he denies it. Although he notices a strange smile on Lily's face the rest of the walk to school. Maybe Lily likes hairy men. It's book report day at school, and Larry's dreading having to present in front of the class. His nemesis Howie confidently goes first and presents on a Matt Christopher baseball book, and I was kind of like, what the fuck is that? Because it seems odd for Stein to name drop something so specific. Some googling showed me that this man wrote over 300 children books on sports, and then I realized that's why I had no idea who the hell he was. I don't do sports now, and I didn't do them as a child. Not my thing. When it's Larry's turn to present, Howie trips him and sends him tumbling. As Larry's picking himself off the ground, he notices both his hands are covered in thick black hair. He ends up fleeing the classroom to the bathroom to avoid embarrassment which I was disappointed with because I was hoping Stein would make his book report on one of the most traumatizing dog books I read as a kid, Where the Red Fern Grows, or maybe Old Yeller. In the bathroom, Larry once again reverts to tugging at the hair in hopes of pulling it off in one big clump. Once this doesn't work, he's stumped because he doesn't think he can escape home to shave. To make matters worse, he realizes he's no longer alone, and that the principal, Mr. Fosberg, is staring right at his hairy little paws. Larry is so hairy that the principal mistakes Larry's hairy hands for gloves and agrees that the school is awfully cold today. This inspires Larry to throw in some leather gloves and head back to class to give her his report in style. His book was by Bruce Govile, and since he didn't say which one, I'm gonna hope he's doing Jerby Thatcher, Dragon Hatcher, because I remember liking that one. Larry survives the day feeling sweaty and hairy. When getting ready to race home, he informs Lily that he's skipping band practice because he doesn't feel great, which doesn't make her very happy. 
When he gets home, he launches into a full-on confession to his mom with the opening line, I'm growing hair, mom. Really gross black hair. At this moment, she's probably thinking, damn, I knew we should have had the talk sooner. But no, Larry actually explained all of the dumpster lotion situation, and his mom didn't hear any of it because she was on the phone. He groans and heads upstairs to spend some quality time in the bathroom again. On the way, he stops to pet his cat Jasper, who has crazy yellow eyes, and is suddenly freaked out by Larry. He assumes it's due to his scary hairy Larry hands. In the bathroom, he discovers that shaving is a real pain in the ass, and has an extra hard time shaving the crevice between his fingers. We jump to that night where we learn about a recent nightmare he had, which involved eating a plate of spaghetti, except the spaghetti transformed into the thick black hair as he got ready to put it in his mouth, which is really gross, great imagery. That morning, he does a full body inspection for any new hair patches, and is relieved to find no new hair. He packs his emergency hair gloves and heads off to school, except this doesn't go smoothly because he is suddenly face to face with the dog pack from earlier. Larry has a few pages of being chased and nearly hit by a car before he runs into Lily and Jared. The three of them are able to scare the dogs off, and Jared remarks that one of the dogs looks just like Manny, with its dark curly hair and soulful eyes. While chatting, Larry happens to touch his neck and realizes that there's a thick patch of new hair back there. Except wait, it's actually just his scarf he forgot he was wearing? Quite the chapter cliffhanger. Larry then spends a couple pages in the bathroom brushing his hair and repeating the plot so far to himself. During this, he gives himself a scare at the thought of his blonde hair falling out and being replaced by this thick, black, spiky hair. Later that day in gym class, Larry is dressing down, and as he's taking off his jeans, he discovers more hair where there wasn't hair before. This book truly is one gigantic puberty allegory. The hair is not where you expect, it's on his kneecaps. So now he's running around with fuzzy kneecaps and hairy hands. I keep picturing the kid who turns into a monkey slowly during Jumanji. Larry ends up just wearing jeans to gym class, which is not well received by the coach. At home, Larry races into the bathroom again so he can shave his knees. This causes him to wonder if the instantan got into his system and is spreading through his whole body because he never rubbed it on his knees earlier. He heads to band practice where all the kids realize Manny is nowhere to be found and his phone seems disconnected. They settle on a full-on investigation and proceed to march over to his house. Once at the house, the front door creeps open and they discover that the place is completely empty. They are shocked Manny would leave without saying anything to them, but seem more at peace with it than I would be if a good friend just suddenly vanished. We hop to Saturday and Larry and his dad are going on their morning jog together. Larry decides to have a man-to-man -man talk about this new mysterious hair, and his father's reaction is not what Larry's hoping for. His dad freaks out at the mention of these new hairs, and in a chapter cliffhanger races Larry to the doctor. Dr. Merkin gives Larry another shot and mentions how he knows it's early, but figures why not since he's already there, which sounds like a very scientific approach to medicine. Dr. Merkin reassures Larry that the instantan isn't making him hairy, and is just kind of vaguely like, well, we'll just have to see if the hair happens again. It then cuts to band practice, where they're practicing the Beatles' I Wanna Hold Your Hand. I don't like the Beatles. I get that they were revolutionary and whatnot, but I still don't like them. During practice, Larry acknowledges that they actually sound better without Manny, since three guitars seems to overpower Lily's singing voice. He also wonders to himself if his friends are all sprouting new hairs, and just not say anything about it. He decides he must know his friend's hair situation, and blurts out, Have any of you been growing hair? Really ugly patches of black hair? This goes about as well as you would expect, and Christina and Jared start chanting Harry Larry and making werewolf jokes. Lily isn't joined in it on the fun, so he asks her one-on-one -on -one if she's sprouting new hairs, and she just says she doesn't want to talk about it and leaves. On the way home, Larry tries to pull his cap back down in the wind, but realizes it won't fit, because now his forehead is covered in hair suddenly too. He races home and discovers his parents are out shopping and won't be home till later. He then heads to the bathroom to shave his forehead. While doing so, he decides he needs to find the bottle of instantan he littered so he can show it to Dr. Merkin. It takes multiple pages, but Larry reaches Lily's house and is horrified when the dumpster is gone. But that's because he doesn't remember what a little litter bug he was. He's rewarded for this behavior and finds the bottle in the woods where he chucked it earlier. While in the woods, he suddenly runs into a new dog. He thinks this dog is nice enough, but as he turns to leave, he realizes there's six other dogs watching him and they don't look as friendly. He starts to run but trips over a rock, which sends the instantan bottle crashing to the ground where it shatters, because I guess this bottle has been glass the whole time. The dogs go after a rabbit instead of Larry, and he heads home defeated. We move vaguely into the future, where Larry's practicing guitar in his room and mentions in passing that he hasn't been able to get a hold of Lily yet. While looking at his hands, he sees that they're covered in hair. He then pulls up his sleeves and pants and sees that his arms and legs are also now entirely hairy. He runs to the bathroom because he's suddenly very worried about having a hairy tongue for some reason, and sees in the mirror that his cheeks and chin are also covered in black hair. On Monday morning, he gets to school early so he can see if he can find Lily, confront her on whether she's hairy or not, so they can face this challenge together. It had taken him hours to shave that morning, but he did it, so he's annoyed and worried that Lily's nowhere to be found. He then runs into Howie, who wants to know if the geeks are ready for Battle of the Bands. Larry lies and is like, of course we are. Howie thinks Star Search might be there, and he thinks he'll end up on TV. Howie sounds a lot like Chris from Night of the Living Dummy, whose dreams of fame also started with a Star Search reference. On his way home, a new dog bumps into him and is very friendly. It follows him home and his mom remarks on how pretty the new dog is. 
There he goes to check the dog tag, only to realize it's not a dog tag, it's Lily's gold pirate coin. Upon even further inspection, the dog also has one green eye and one blue eye, just like Lily. There he shouts, Lily, in the dog's face, which startles it enough to take off down the street. He decides to go to her house, where he sees Lily's parents packing up the car. They let him know that they're going away, and when he asks where Lily is, they just insist there is no Lily, and that they don't know what he's talking about. This causes Larry to have a mini mental breakdown, where he starts laughing hysterically to himself. Lily's mom tells Larry with tears in her eyes that there is no Lily and just to forget about her. Larry is overwhelmed and races home. Larry invites Christina and Jared over to deliver the bad news that Lily is gone now too, and they're more upset how this will ruin their chances at Battle of the Bands. They settle on making Christina the singer now, and want to win in honor of Lily. I guess Manny is just old news to these kids now. Christina then says, oh my god, what's that on your forehead in a chapter cliffhanger? It's nothing. Larry just got spaghetti sauce on his forehead by eating like a little animal earlier. The next day we're at the much hyped Battle of the Bands, and the geeks are feeling pretty intimidated by Howie and the Shouters, because they have dressed for the occasion, and seem to have better everything than the geeks, including actual talent. Howie and the Shouters play Johnny B. Good by Chuck Berry, because Stein knows that's what the kids are into these days, which causes the auditorium to go crazy. They perform four songs before bowing to leave, but the audience wants more, so they sing two more songs. Things aren't looking too good for the geeks at the moment. The geeks finally enter the stage and plan to start with I Want to Hold Your Hand, then plan to move on to a Rolling Stones song, because Stein is very, very hip with the kids. The performance goes well enough, but suddenly Larry notices the crowd laughing and shouting, great special effects. This can only mean one thing, Harry Larry has returned. This results in the geeks winning the Battle of the Bands, because the Harry transformation really did it for everybody, I guess. Larry is too upset to really care and races out of the school and straight home. He bursts in the door in all his Harry glory and confronts his parents who are horrified by their Harry son. Larry launches into a rant about the instant hand when they cut him off and deliver one of the best lines in Goosebumps so far. Larry, you have to know the truth now. You're growing hair because you're not a human. You're a dog. The final three pages are now from Dog Larry's point of view. He and Dog Lily are running around the yard together. It turns out that this town is one massive science experiment. Dr. Merkin created a serum that could turn dogs into kids so all the parents in town were in on this experiment and had to take their dog children to Dr. Merkin every two weeks for shots to keep them in kid form. Dr. Merkin has a heart though, because Dr. Merkin has decided to stop testing the serum on dogs. It just doesn't work, and it causes the families too much pain when their children turn back into dogs. This explains why there are so many strange dogs running around town, and why Larry didn't have any sweat glands. You'd think this is enough of a final twist, but Stein's not finished yet. Dog Larry goes to meet his parents after work, only to discover they have a new baby. Except this baby's named Jasper, and it has bright yellow eyes. And that's how it ends. A supremely dumb, but entertaining story. There is a direct episode pairing for My Harry's Adventure, and it does a nice job adapting a very odd book. Our notable actor this week is going to be Rick Reed, because he's been on both The X-Files and The Outer Limits, which I love. So, on to the episode. The dog is always my favorite part of the intro, and it finally felt relevant to mention that. If you watch closely, one of the dogs in the background is a terrible actor. I hope no one saw me. Larry, you sexist pig. That's Lily, my best friend. Beat it. She's pretty cool, you know, for a girl. I like Jared's enthusiasm. It seems like there's a lot of empty houses in our neighborhood lately. At least it didn't come from the dumpster this time. Hey, check this out. Instant 10. Gives you an instant 10. Hey, cool. I'm gonna try some. Me too. Okay, Jared, calm down. All right. All right. All right. This was about as effective as I was picturing it. Look! My skin! <sighs> Paper towel. Psych. <laughs> Our first hair appearance. What's your problem? Aggressive humming is one way to ensure privacy in the bathroom, I suppose. Larry? Mm. Are you almost done in there? Almost. Mm. Mm. Jeez. This conversation speaks for itself. I mean hair, you know, like where you don't expect to see it. Are you growing some unexpected hair? No, are you? No, are you? Growing hair in weird places. Never mind. Harry Larry. It was pretty embarrassing talking to a girl about body hair. I wonder how long he waited there for this moment. Can I help you? We were looking for Manny. Manny who? 
Why did this just gross me out so much? Whoa! Cornworms! The drama of it all. I hate tapioca. I couldn't face the embarrassment of tapioca, so I jumped. I've seen hairier, to be honest. If a dog had eyes like this, I would think it's magic. Those eyes. Lily? This episode is full of top tier acting. I don't want food, I want answers. Larry, don't run! Watch out for cars! This kid running around with werewolf arms is cracking me up. to me the hair it was back oh we've reached full werewolf mom dad mom dad mom dad i like the reveal they went with hello get a clue how about a steak poor larry he's had a hard day yummy yummy this kind of feels like a happy ending to me we have fun Chasing cars, barking at strangers, scratching in public. This baby is some scary shit. My Jasper? <laughs> Overall, I thought My Harriest Adventure was a pretty enjoyable read. As far as Goosebumps friend groups go, this one wasn't terrible. Maybe because they had Battle of the Bands to discuss versus constant attempts at humor. This book falls into the complete nonsense twist category, but I still found it entertaining throughout. Granted, there was a lot of laughing at the expense of the book versus with the book, but that doesn't take away from the fun for me. I'm going to give this one 4 out of 5 bottles of Instatan. I think this book was good in its own way, and it certainly wasn't boring. Okay, on to our totals. My Harry's Adventure didn't have any vomit, it's only a dreams, shoulder scares or asshole victims, but it did bring us back to the 90s. In Getting Jiggy with the 90s, we had three 90s moments. These included Trapper Keepers, Doc Martens, and Star Search. This brings our series total to 97 Jiggy 90s moments. We had just one It's a Prank Bro in My Harry's Adventure. This was when Howie trips Larry before his book report. A lame prank, but a prank nonetheless. This brings our series total to 47 It's a Prank Bros. My Harry's Adventure had a total of 13 chapter cliffhangers, and they were decent throughout this story. This raises our goosebumps total to 318. The clunky cliffhanger award for this book goes to chapters 13 to 14, where Larry confuses his scarf for neck hair. An easy mistake to make, I'm sure. Shocker ending. Our big twist to this story, besides finding out that Larry had been a mutant dog child this whole time, is when we learn that the experiment isn't over, and his new baby sister is actually Jasper the Cat on the last page. This brings our Goosebumps series total to 21. Well that's it for my hairiest adventure, an interesting read that I found myself laughing about multiple times throughout. I can see why everybody might not like it though. The next book is A Night in Terror Tower, which I don't remember reading, but I do remember the episode possibly. I think it may have something to do with time travel, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my hairiest adventure. Are you a lover or a hater of this one? Are you into dumpster diving? What's your favorite dog breed? And what did you think of my transformation horror-ish clips this week? I'll be honest, I struggled with the clip theme for this one. Anyways, as always, thanks again for watching and make sure you subscribe for... The Brad. The Love. <laughs>